as we come to this uh, new year and we hear this prayer for the doxology about uh, walking away from the old self that we were and to be, ask God for forgiveness uh, in this new year, uh, we're reminded that every single liturgy, every single service is a call for us to, to realign ourselves with God, to, to become uh, whatever errors we have done, whatever things that we are not proud of that might even be in secret that no one else knows about but God. It's a time for us in the service, in the pews, in our prayers, to just ask God for forgiveness and ask him for a new start each and every day. So don't just look at New Year's Day as the day where we all make all those drastic changes and, and we start exercising, we start eating different, we do all these other things, but to think of each day as small changes. Um, there's, if you look at any ship that is moving, and we know that the church is called a ship, any ship that's moving, it can't just drastically change directions. It takes a long time to turn a, a fast-moving ship because of its size, because of its momentum. And just remember that even when a ship realizes that it's going the wrong direction and it starts to turn, until it gets the direction it wants to go, it's still going the wrong way. So if, it needs, if it's going this way and it needs to go over here, everything between here and here is the wrong direction until you're going the right direction. So go easy on yourselves and understand that change is not everything all at once. You can't, you can't just uh, lose 50 pounds in, in a day. You can't just become muscular overnight. You can't just become a spiritual giant uh, by saying one set of prayers. It's little incremental things that add up. And if you think about every thing in your life, every uh, piece of uh, item that you own in your home, it's a lot of different things. But if you were to do it all at once, it would be overwhelming. But you add things little by little. You get a couch, you get a chair, you get a table, you get a lamp, you add things in your refrigerator, you buy clothing, and it's little by little that we acquire the things that we have. And we have to remember that for our souls, too, that it's little by little that we acquire the spiritual growth for our souls. So don't go crazy knocking yourself out to, to do all these drastic changes. Pick one thing if you can, and just start etching away at it, little by little, until you are going the way that you want to go with whatever that is. But guaranteed, I've seen it uh, year after year, that January is usually the blown rotator cuff month, because men decide that they're going to go exercise, and they go to the gym, their wife got them a gym pass or whatever, they go to the gym and they go to do a bench press and they put 300 pounds thinking they're Arnold Schwarzenegger and pop, and then they break their rotator cuff and then they can't do anything. So we have to go slow. So start slow and work your way in. That's the same uh, advice that I will give you for Lent. It's the same advice I'll give you for your whole life. Is start slow and add little by little by little. Mothers who ha have small children, if you've ever seen um, a mother with a small child that's maybe like a year, year old or whatever, you see them, they have their car seat hanging from their elbow, they have a, a bag over their shoulder, they have the baby like this, and you see their biceps and you're like, what, how did that happen? It happened from a little seven pound baby that turned seven and a half pounds, that turned eight pounds, and you start adding things on and by the end you, you look at new mothers and they're, they're toting all these things like they're traveling gypsies across the country and they're strong because they started from little incremental steps. But if you just give somebody a 30 pound child and a car seat and a bag and diaper bags and bottles and all these things, they'd be like, this is too heavy, I can't do it. It's little by little that we gain the strength. So pace yourselves. Don't go crazy make, making all the changes, but just pace yourselves and keep stable and consistent. But always remember that we can't eat a meal all in one sitting. We have to take bites. We have to chew it. We have to process it. And it's the same thing with our, with our new year and our spiritual lives too. So keep that in mind. That's what I will tell you all the time with your life. Lent, new year, birthday, any type of changes, go slow so that you don't end up in the hospital and then you can't do anything. Uh, so pace yourselves. And I pray that you have a blessed year 
and that God continues to strengthen you and guide you. And as, as the priest here, uh, I also want to let you know that my door is always open for you, my emails, my phone, whatever, so that if you have questions about, you might say, well, what should I do differently this year? You said some things and I, I don't quite know which direction to go. I will be more than glad to help you. And you have to know as well that I will never give you something that will knock you down. It's only things to help you lift up and to grow. So if you are interested in, in coming up with a plan for yourself, I'll give you something that works and something that will give you those, those, the little tastes of, of growth so that you can grow and become stronger and little by little continue to develop and, and grow. I'll leave you with one uh, last story. I had a man who uh, during Lent came to me, he was a, uh, was a convert to the faith, and he said, uh, he said, Father, I want to fast this year. And I said, have you ever fasted before ever? And he said, no, I haven't. This is my first time. And I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, just don't eat meat. Okay, that's it. Just start there for this year. And he's like, Father, but that's not the whole fast. And I said, I understand that, but you haven't fasted. Just try this, okay? I'm giving this to you as, as something to do that's doable, that you can do, and, and move on. So he says, all right, well, I'll, I'll do that. But, you know, I really, you know, I've, I've read this, i read that, and of course, you know, they're sometimes the priests are the dumbest guys in the room. And uh, so I said, okay, just do this and, and, you know, come back to me halfway during Lent, and we'll see how it's going. Well, it was about five days into Lent, I get a call from a hospital. And guess who it is? It's the guy I told to eat no meat on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I said, what, what happened? Are you okay? Did you get in a car accident? Did you have a heart attack? Nope. What I did is I decided I was going to drink Jamba juice every day and not eat anything else. And I, I had a blood sugar problem and I ended up passing out at work and I hit my head and blah, blah, blah. And he went, so I go to the hospital and I said, do you see why I gave you something that was doable? Because now he's at the hospital and the doctor's like, you better not do whatever you were doing. You got to eat and get your strength back. So his fasting went from a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, which was doable to nothing because he decided he was going to overburden himself. So don't overburden yourself. Just a little at a time, and it's, it's doable. Okay? Happy New Year. Kronia Palati, all year. The Vasilikis, the Vasilioses. Vasiliki, Vasiliki. There's another Vasilios, right? And see, I, I remember, I'll, I'll get... The more you come to church, the more I'll know your name, and hopefully I'll be able to, um, to uh, say your names as you come for communion. But it's, it's going to take me a little bit because it's a rotating... It's a rotating group, so, and I have to get to know where you sit in your different sections, too. So I'm getting there. It's just going to take a little time. So, Kronia Palat to all of you. Kronia, he's gone. Uh, Kronia Palat.